Hello boys and girls, welcome to Mrs. Robinson's online learning. We are going to be working on Common Core flashcards. Today specifically, we're going to be working on multiplication Common Core flashcards. So what makes these flashcards unique is that we are going to be breaking the front up into three different sections. So now the front of our flashcard is broken up into thirds. Why we did that is because in Common Core there are so many ways to solve a multiplication problem now. So what I've done is we have the problem on top and we have two different strategies for a student or anybody to solve a multiplication problem so that when you're looking at the problem, you could use these two strategies in order to figure out the product on the back. So with that being said, I'm gonna write why I have these two boxes here is because this is going to be the front of my flashcard and this is going to be the back of my flashcard. Before we start, however, what I want to work on is some vocabulary, some academic terms. Vocabulary. These vocabulary academic terms are going to help us as we're solving our multiplication problems. So, I learned of a fancy fancy word for the first number of a multiplication sentence. And that first fancy fancy word is a multiplicand. Try it. Multiplicand. You like feels fancy saying it. Multiplicand. That is the first number in a multiplication sentence. So I'm going to get my black marker and I'm going to write first number. The first number in a multiplication sentence is a what? A multiplicand. Our second number in a multiplication sentence, anybody know? It's called a multiplier. Multiplier. That is the second number. And there's one more number in a multiplication sentence. I bet anybody could tell me what that final number is called. But do you know the academic term? It is product. Product is the answer in a multiplication sentence. So right underneath product, I'm going to write the answer. So before we get started, we have determined that a multiplicand is the first number, a multiplier is the second number, and the product is the final answer on the back. So we're going to use our pink to determine our first number in our multiplication sentence for our flashcard that we're working on. In my class, we've worked on our twos, we've worked on our threes, so let's go ahead and do this as a four. So we'll pretend that we are working on our fours. We're going to write our multiplicand, the first number as a four, times our multiplier, the second number, which is going to be, let's say three, four times three. So what these two boxes are, are two different strategies. Let's start by determining our first strategy. Strategy one. Strategy number one in our middle section is going to be equal groups. So for equal groups, you are going to use your first number, your multiplicand, 
to create how many equal groups you need. Let's head on back up to our flashcard now and draw out how many equal groups we need. We said that our multiplicand is four. So let's draw four equal groups. Now in our equal groups, we're gonna use our multiplier to determine how many um, objects go in each group. So we said that our second number, our multiplier is three. Well, we're gonna put three objects in each of our four groups. So let's review the strategy of equal groups. We are going to use, we're going to use the multiplicand to determine how many equal groups we need. The second step is to use the second number. What's the second number called again? The multiplier. We're gonna use the multiplier to determine how many objects go in each group. And that is our strategy number one of creating equal groups. Now we're gonna start working on the bottom section of our flashcard, which is going to be strategy number two to solve for our product. Our second strategy is called an array. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building an array. Now that might sound crazy, but what it really is, is we're going to be creating our multiplication sentence into columns and rows. So one way to help me remember which is which is I'm gonna write my first word, column. And I'm gonna write rows in the color of my multiplier so I can remember which is which. So let's start with our multiplicand, our first number. We're gonna draw objects going in columns down straight 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 line so that we don't get confused with the next column next to it they don't have to just be dots it could be a square it could be a triangle it could be a heart it could be whatever you want as long as you try to keep it in that straight column row i mean in that straight column When building an array, you look to your multiplicand, the first number, to build the straight, straight column going down. So I put four hearts in a straight column going down because our multiplicand was four. What you do next is you use your second number, the multiplier, to create how many rows across you need. So our second number says it's a three, so I'm going to need three rows across. They don't need to be right next to each other, but they can be. I already have one row, which still counts. So now I'm gonna draw my second row. My second in the row. Now I only have two in the row. 
So now I need to draw the third one in each row. Once you've drawn three across, you have three objects in a row. So you need to make sure though that each row is equal. These have three more. We need to add three more so that it's four in each of our three rows. And we try to make them as straight down and straight across as we can so that it builds fluency in our mind. So let's go back and review this strategy on our poster board. To build an array, you need to use the, what's our first number called again? Multiplication. Ooh, I'm gonna put it down here, let's see. To create how many columns you need going down. The second step is to use the, what's the second number in a multiplication sentence called? Multiplier. Two. Create, to create how many rows you need going across. So that is the second strategy we are using on our multiplication flashcards. Now, if you did both of these two strategies correctly, we should have the same answer for our product on the back. Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. Four times three equals 12. Let's check our answer with our array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Four times three equals 12. So let's write it on the back of our flashcard. And that's how we create the multiplication flashcards, Common Core style. Now, say you don't have flashcards at home. Well, one thing you can do is you can get a blank piece of paper or a lined piece of paper and fold it in half and in half again. That gives you a solid four to work with. One, two, three, four. And let's see. And I'd stick with four. That gives you a solid big amount because if you try to go another one, it's a little too small. If you've got very, very, very neat penmanship, then you could do another fold. And you would have, how many do you think? Eight, you have eight cards in one piece of paper that you could cut out and use as flashcards. But only go to eight if you have really, really, really neat handwriting because look at how much you have to write and look at how tiny that space is. So make sure you only do that if you like to write small and very neat. Now that I've finished modeling how to do your Common Core flashcards, I think it would be so, 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 so awesome if you finished the rest of your Common Core flashcards, or if you haven't started, get started. Start on the twos, you could do two groups of two, and then you could go all the way up to 12, which would mean you'd be creating 12 groups with however many objects in each group. So you could use this same strategy over and over and over to create all the flashcards you need this would be an awesome activity for you to be working on during this break. So I'm going to go build the rest of my flashcards. 
I suggest if you want to, I would do like a group of all my fours today, then maybe take a break, practice them with your brother, sister, mom or dad, and then maybe do all your fives tomorrow. Practice the fives with your mom or dad, sister or brother, then do the sixes the next day, sevens the next day, eights, nines, tens, elevens, twelves. Learn them all because once you have them all in your brain, it makes everything in math so much easier. It actually will follow you all the way throughout life. Even when you want to just go eat with your friends, you'll have, say, $20 with you. You'll need to know, hmm, well, I have three friends with me. I only have $20. I know mentally because I made these flashcards and I remembered that three times four is 12. That's close to 20. I know we can at least spend $4. Because don't forget, we're in California, so there's tax. But, you know, once you memorize your multiplication facts, it'll make everything in life so much easier. Math facts is one thing I can promise you will continue to use. Try to prove me wrong. So go make some. Ready? Let's go.